I'll tell you who was a bystander here. Israeli intelligence. It's shocking, really. You think elite espionage, you think Mossad. They've carried out operations in different countries. They've infiltrated enemy organizations. They've killed Iranian nuclear scientists in Iran. Yet they could not track this. An attack right under their nose. How did that happen? Was it overconfidence, poor intelligence, or something else? Well, overconfidence for certainly one reason, even for the Americans. They'd struck a series of peace deals in West Asia. A number of Arab states had recognized Israel, so they thought, job done. Look at what America's national security advisor said eight days ago. His name is Jack Sullivan. He said, the Middle East is quieter today than in two decades. If that wasn't overconfidence, I wonder what is. But that alone does not cause a disaster like this. Poor intelligence played a role here too. Reports say Hamas pulled off a great deception. They lulled Israel into a false sense of security. I'll explain how. In 2021, Hamas and Israel fought a short war. But since then, there have been no military operations. Hamas was quiet for more than two years. They even talked about economic gains, about progress for the people in Gaza. And Israel bought it. They provided financial incentives to Gaza even gave thousands of work permits so people from Gaza could work in Israel and the West Bank. And their salaries were 10 times what they got in Gaza. But behind the scenes, Hamas was busy training soldiers, stocking up weapons and rockets, even building mock Israeli settlements for practice, the ones we just told you about. How did Israel miss all of this? Well, according to some officials, they did not. Apparently, Israel did have information about these weapons. Unfortunately, they could not connect the dots. They failed to realize that it was all meant for one single attack. Other reports say Egypt also warned them. They cautioned Israel about an impending attack. And once again, Israel ignored it. In other words, this attack was preventable. But let's forget intelligence for now. Let's also focus on what, what else could have gone wrong. For starters, the technology, it went wrong for sure. Israel and Gaza are separated by a massive barrier. It is made up with 140,000 tons of iron and steel. The total cost of building this was $1.1 billion. Israel called it the Iron Wall. Around 65 kilometers of this wall is underground, so no tunneling business either. You had hundreds of cameras, sensors and command posts. The idea was to prevent all types of attacks. But look at what happened on Saturday. Hamas bulldozed through the iron wall. They literally cut the fencing wire in some places. What happened to the cameras and sensors? Well, only Israel's government can tell us. But you know what? Let's also keep the technology aside for now. Common sense should have stopped this attack. Just look at the events of the past one year. Israel-Arab cooperation has reached new heights. They're building an economic corridor together. Saudi Arabia has been talking about normalization. So Israel's isolation was ending, and it was ending fast. Then you had the West Bank situation. Israel was carrying out more raids and building more settlements. The biggest raid was held in July, the biggest in more than 20 years. Close to 200 Palestinians were killed by Israeli fire in one year. That's the highest in a long, long time. So the ground sentiment was very strong. Plus, there was internal turmoil in Israel. Thousands protested against Prime Minister Netanyahu's judicial reforms. The Prime Minister was under pressure and he was distracted. His relations with the US also suffered. President Biden did not invite him. He did not invite Netanyahu to Washington for nine months. That's the longest time for an Israeli Prime Minister. Now put all these factors together, rising violence in the West Bank, trouble and protests at home, rapid normalization process, and cooling relations with the US. It was a perfect moment for Israel's enemies to strike. They were distracted and caught napping. Many former Israeli intelligence officials have called out these agencies. A probe is already underway. Officials say it could take years to complete, but the damage has already been done. Israel spends billions of dollars on intelligence. Their spy agency, Mossad, has a budget of $3 billion. Around 7,000 people work for them. So resource was not their problem. Inputs was not their problem. I guess the buck stops with the leadership.